Welcome to another episode of Vibe with Bello. I have Anthony, one of our developer advocates here with me to talk about the Wix storage API. Hey, Anthony. Hi, Meredith. Happy to be talking about uh, the storage API today. It might sound boring, but it's actually pretty useful. Yeah, I think it's gonna be really useful for our users. I think a lot of people don't know about the storage API and could find a lot of benefits in their development with it. So you don't mm -hmm. always need to persist everything to the database right away. And you might wanna keep some user information in the browser. So I think it'll be really helpful for us to talk through the different storage types, whether it's that local session or memory storage type. Um, so can you go ahead and take us through what all those types mean and why I might use some of those types? Yeah, sure. I mean, first, more generally to just elaborate on your point there, uh, basically you're correct to you use client-side storage whenever you need uh, your, your website to function more reliably when the interconnect internet connection is poor or the user is offline, or alternatively, you want to cut down on the amount of, of delay between the user doing something on your website, sending it to the server, and then waiting for it to update again. So uh, you might see things, and I'll probably talk about them a little later, like for example, uh, a shopping cart is an example of an excellent, use, uh, excellent way to use the local or session API because you'll store everything offline and then submit it to the web server later when the user's done and ready to, to check out, for example. But let me ju jump in and show my share my screen here and talk about the three different types. So I put together a little demo that kind of helps to explain them a little more uh, through this actual interactive uh, website. So there's three different types, as you mentioned, there's local, there's session, and there's memory. Uh, local and session actually mirror native APIs that are available in the browser. It's just Wix is making them available through their API. And memory is kind of an interesting one that probably isn't going to get used that much, uh, but I'll show you how each of these work and then talk about when you would use each of these. So right now we have these little counters here and I'm gonna increment each of them. And so for local session and memory, we'll just set each of them to one. Uh, now for memory, this is the most volatile of the types of storage. So if the website gets refreshed at all, if it gets closed, if anything else happens, uh, it's going to reset to zero. So if I refresh the page right now, you're going to see that memory was completely erased. So you might think, like I said before about the, uh, shopping cart, the shopping cart, you would not want this right here because if somebody added 10 items to their shopping cart and the page refreshed and now they're gone, uh, they are not going to be buying from your website. But you can see though that local and session stuck around, which I think, which is great and pretty useful, uh, but they are a little different from, from each other too, even though they both survived the refresh. So the thing you'll notice about session is if I open another tab and the website loads, we now see session is also zero. Local still sticking around, but session basically gets erased um, whenever the, a new tab is open, it gets a new session essentially. So if you close a tab, the session's gone. And that's the way you can think about it. But if we go back to the first page and we refresh, we'll see that on this tab, the session stayed. And on this tab, the session can also stay. Uh, and these two sessions, like on this tab and this tab are actually different from each other. So that's useful in, in some cases when a user might have multiple uh, pages that they're viewing uh, and you might have data, for example, that sticks around a little bit, but occasionally needs to be refreshed. You can think like if you had a stock charting website and you had a price ticker, uh, maybe that data makes sense for session data because it can survive resets, but ultimately isn't something that needs to stick around for so, so long. So we'll reset that one. Uh, and now we're down to local. And so local is the, is the data that sticks around the most. Uh, if you were to close the tab or close the browser, uh, it will stay around. So if I were to even increment this and close the tab and come back, open up a new tab, we'll see that local actually stayed around. Uh, local really, the only way it gets deleted is if somebody manually goes in and not just hard refreshes the, their page, but completely clears their browser cache is the only way that local gets deleted. So this is like, this is the perfect one for things where 
you don't want the user to risk losing it. And it's content really that the user is largely generating to maybe be submitted to your website's server later. And yeah, so those are basically the, the three different types of data that, that you have to, to play around with. And local and session are probably what you're mostly going to be using as you program uh, Vela websites. Very cool, thank you for that overview. I think one of the things a lot of our users use Velo for is to create multi-stage forms. So if I was creating a multi-stage form, when would I want to submit something to a collection versus use this storage API? Okay, yeah, so that's a great example. For a multi-stage form, you would want to use local storage as much as possible until the form is fully filled out. Uh, there is one caveat there in that local storage and session only have about 50 kilobits of space, so it is fairly limited. But uh, you would generally save all the data locally and then submit it uh, once the forms are fully filled out. Cool, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, we don't want to like save too much data in our browser, especially since we're, we're limited in terms of the Velo APIs. Now we can't talk about storage without talking about the yummy, delicious cookies. So mm -hmm. how can I set cookies versus storage with Velo? Uh, sure. So for cookies, you don't really set them yourself. Velo and Wix's uh, architecture provide all the cookies that your website needs for whatever functionality you're using, whether it be user logins or other things. The way that storage and cookies differ is storage is very much data generated on the client side for the client to use and maybe later to pass back to your website server. Cookies are kind of the opposite of that. Cookies are generated largely on the server side and sent to the client so that later when the server needs to identify which user is there, it can go to the browser and ask it for that data and say, who's logged in, can I have your token? Um, and that'll get passed back to the server. So they're really like they're really two different sides of the same coin, uh, store or separate coins actually. Uh, storage being used for persisting data locally and using it locally, and server being data created by and cookies being data created by the server and used for the server's purposes. So cookies aren't really something you would need to normally worry about if you. Uh, needed to, for example, access user information or that type of thing, you wouldn't go through cookies, you would use the Wix users uh, API instead. All right, so I guess now I'm making my own cookies on my Velo site. <laughs> uh, but also in terms of, we're talking about like native browser storage versus Velo storage too. Um, so are there any major differences we should know about other than the size limitations about the Velo storage, um, especially local and session storage, versus the browser native storage? Yeah, so the, the size limitation is one thing, uh, like I mentioned before. And then the other thing is that browsers typically don't have memory storage. Um, so it's kind of a thing that the Velo API provides, but browsers natively wouldn't actually have a facility for that. And yeah, that, that's basically it. Awesome. And I, I, is there anything else you want to share with us about like local or session storage in Velo versus browser storage? Uh, no, I would say in general, they're the same, but the two things we could talk about with these, with these types of storage is that uh, number one, they only store strings. So the way you would actually manage that is uh, every browser has uh, a JSON object, and that object has two different functions. One is JSON.stringify, the other one is JSON.parse. You would use stringify to encode any, any other non-string object, be it an int or even a full object, uh, into a string. And then you can store that in, in your session. And then you would take use JSON parse for whenever you would retrieve something from from a local or session storage to then go ahead and parse that back into the object or type that it was beforehand. Uh, so that's one thing to just keep in mind. If you just try to pass in an integer, uh, basically you're going to get an error message. So you need to make sure 
to encode and decode uh, into strings. That's a good thing to keep in mind, especially when you want to make sure you have data integrity and making sure everything is staying in the proper form and you're not losing any sort of information as you're storing that in your storage. Um, yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Anthony. For the rest of you out there, stay tuned for more from Vibe with Bellow.